Hello and welcome to the Zoe product demo part one. In this video we'll go over the various ways users can interact with Zoe and some of the key terminology that will help us better understand Zoe. Alright so what we're looking at here is the Zoe admin panel and this is where your sales reps, your uh, people that manage your product catalog, anybody managing your theme, an administrator. This is the interface that they're going to be using uh, when they're working with the Zoe system. We also have the front-end interface which is what your customers are going to be using when they're self-serving uh, either to create a quote or to place an order. Now this is just the Zoe demo store. It certainly is not what your store has to look like and if you go to zoe.com and click on customers you'll see dozens of examples of what the store can look like uh, but if you go to demo.zoe.com you'll be able to take a look at what we've built here. So in addition to this, if you have an iOS device such as an iPad or an iPhone, we also have the Zoe B2B salesperson app. So you can go to the Apple App Store, search for Zoe B2B, and then download it. It has a full demo, no credit card required. Uh, you can check out all of the features and functionality, and it's really useful for sales reps that are on the go when they need to view the product catalog, view customer information, view previous orders, place orders, create quotes on behalf uh, of the customer. They can do that right then and there if they don't want to use the web interface. Now before we start uh, with all of the specific features, I want to go over some key terminology so that we're on the same page about what we're looking at here. First and foremost, we'll take a look at customers, and a customer in Zoe is just a simple object. That means it's just an email address and a password. But you'll notice that customers have attributes, quotes have attributes, orders have attributes, and products have attributes. Attributes in Zoe allow you to extend the information that we natively collect. In other words, a product attribute could be like a brand or a manufacturer. A customer attribute could be like a tax ID or a reseller certificate that the customer uploads. A quote or order attribute allows you to modify the checkout to add additional questions. For example, on the shipping screen, a very popular order attribute that we see our customers use is ship date, where the customer can then click on a calendar and select a date for shipping. Next, we have customer groups, and customer groups allow you to bucket your customers into one group. Uh, so for example, you know, you could have your wholesaler group, you could have like a VIP group, they can be anything. And groups are what the rest of the system is really set up against, meaning each customer group can have its own price list for products, visibility for a product, whether they can or cannot see it, category restrictions, payment methods that they can use, shipping methods that they can use, promotion, sales, discounts, net terms, lines of credit, salespeople, basically every feature that we offer can be segmented by customer group. Finally, we have accounts, and accounts allow you to take one or more customers and roll them up into an account. Think of a synonym for account is company. Within the accounts, you have locations, so you can have like an east side and a west side location. Each account can have its own manager. You can then add individual customers to the different locations and set everything up that way. In addition to that, we have roles and permissions. So for example, you can make it so Mary can only place an order up to $100. Bob has to have his orders approved by the manager and all sorts of other workflows that are specialized for your business. So now that we have a good understanding of some of the key terminology items within Zoe, let's dig into the features.